You have greatness in you. Hello, this is Les Brown. You know, and, and when I give speeches, I often talk about the value of creating OQP, only quality people. As you look at yourself, look at your life right now, and look at all the time that we have on our hands right now, I think it's a good time to look at the relationships that you have and ask the question, what are these relationships doing to me? Am I growing mentally and emotionally and spiritually? Make a really honest assessment of the relationships in your life because people rub off on you. And I'm encouraging you not to isolate yourself. A study was done, The Power of Social Interaction, and it says that social interaction, a rich social network, provides sources of support, reduces stress, combats depression, and enhances intellectual stimulation. Studies have shown that those with the most social interaction within their community experience the slowest rate of memory decline. So I want to ask you, are you building and expanding your network of relationships? And are you working the network? And George Frazier said this, your network determines your net worth. Upgrade those relationships as you think about yourself. You know, Dr. Dennis Kimbrough, I often quote him, he said, you earn within two to three thousand dollars of your closest friends, and if you're the smartest one in your group, you need to get a new group. This truly is a time for self-awareness. As you begin to think about yourself and think about the people that's in your life, that's speaking in your mind, your heart, and your spirit, they have a major role that they play, whether you acknowledge it or not. Family members and friends, they impact you. And so as you look at yourself, look at what it is you want to do this next chapter of your life when we come through this pandemic. And a lot of people are panicked and hopefully that you are not among those that are panicking right now, but really becoming aware of yourself, getting still, getting quiet, journaling, and listening to the still small voice within. And as you do that, asking yourself the question, what is the next greatest version of myself? And what is it I have to do to become that kind of person? Because Earl Nightingale was right, you don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are. So giving some deep thought into looking at the vision of yourself in the future. And what is it you need to do? What radical change must you make in order for you to become the next greatest version of yourself? And what are the behaviors that you need to let go of? The choices that you've made in the past that no longer fit into your vision of yourself. Have you ever had relationships with someone that you're very close to and, and you might have been apart for a while and then you get back together, you were once bosom buddies and now you have nothing in common. I remember when I was speaking in Chicago and this couple always showed up and then I came one time and, and he was seated on one side of the room and she was seated on the other. and. I said, man, why aren't you seated with Gloria? And he said, oh, she left me because I don't have anything. And I said, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And as I was walking toward her, she said, no, I heard what he said. I didn't leave him because he didn't have anything. I left him because he didn't want anything. Whoa. That she had outgrown that relationship and she had swallowed her voice she stopped pursuing her dream. She turned her power down and she got tired of that. I remember seeing a book once that said, why do I have to kill myself to be with you? My daughter, Ona, she told me about a relationship. She said, this guy pursued her and he spent all of his time trying to put her light out, which he was attracted to, her charisma, her presence, her mindset. 
And so as you look at yourself, look at your goals and, and look at your dreams, this is a time, a very special time for all of us to go within, to take personal inventory, self-awareness, know thyself. And the next thing is self-approval. When you determine what it is you want in your life, it's very important that you continue to work on yourself. When you become aware of those things that really turn you on, your sweet spot, those things that give your life a sense of meaning and purpose and significance. When you are approaching life from the standpoint of doing those things that give your life a sense of purpose and that you go to sleep at night with a smile on your face. Self-awareness, self-approval. You must continuously work to expand and increase your sense of self-worth because once your achievements exceed your own sense of self-worth, you will unconsciously engage in self-destructive behavior, self-awareness, self-approval, self-commitment. When you approve and say to yourself, that's something I want, a guy by the name of William Hollis, I call him my, my spiritual son. He has a very powerful presentation he does called, I didn't come this far to come this far. <laughs> And, and, and what he's saying is, hey, I want more than what I've got. I, I, I went to, through too much to get here, not to reach for more, to reach higher. And Socrates says, a man's reach is to supersede his grasp for what are the heavens for? And so this process, when I do trainings for corporations and individuals and churches and, and people who have a growth desire, we call it four stages of greatness self-awareness, self-approval, and self-commitment. Because when you approve certain things for yourself that you want in your life, it requires a level of commitment to go after those things, to be all in, to give it everything you have, to find a way to do it. You are committed to make it happen no matter what. You become a no matter what Person. You're going to have failures. You're going to have setbacks. Things are going to happen that will catch you on the blind side that you never saw coming, that will drop you to your knees. And some of you might be going through that kind of experience right now. But when you feel this is something that I'm supposed to do, when it's your calling, it's a passion, it's something that you love it so much you do it for nothing, but you do it so well that people will pay you to do it. You achieve a level of mastery while doing it, and you call attention to yourself. John H. Johnson said when he got a $500 loan from his mother to start Ebony and Jet Magazine, he said, there's no defense against an excellence that meets a pressing public need. That when you provide service that allows you to develop a reputation for a go-to person, a resourceful person, a person who hold themselves to a higher standard. You can write your own check in life. Self-awareness, self-approval, self-commitment, giving it all that you have. And out of that commitment comes fulfillment, self-fulfillment. You're going to have some victories. You're going to do some things. You're going to accomplish some things. But you don't rest there. Now, you got to ask yourself, how did I get here? What do I need to do now to upgrade my strategy? What game plan do I need now? What new training that will be required? What new relationships that I need to take on? Or the relationships that I presently have that I need to deepen? Or what skills that I need to acquire that will allow me to go to that next level of living? self-awareness, self-approval, self-commitment, self-fulfillment. It's a cyclic process. What do you want out of life? What is it that, that right now, if you had six months to live, what would you do differently? Will you still, if you're working, would you still have the same job? Would you work until the end? 
what 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 would you do would you would you still interact with the same people would would you take some trip someplace that you've been thinking about doing and you you never got around to it or go back to some place that you had such a great time while you were there and you decided I want to go back or would you spend time with somebody that you love or care about and you just allowed life to get in the way or would you decide you know what I don't want to be in this relationship where I am right now they did this study of of people who had been going to several psychiatrists for several years for therapy and and they monitored them and they found something very fascinating that once any of those people who were going to see a psychiatrist once they were diagnosed with a terminal illness even though they had been going for therapy for years they stopped going to therapy they no longer came back and they went on to live their lives <laughs> is it that interesting is <laughs> it so so the truth of the matter is we know the answers and i i remember the president of Procter and Gamble said something about life and he said in life if you want to really live your life on your terms you have to make some tough decisions and he said a tough decision is a tough decision not because you don't know the answer he said a tough decision is a tough decision because we know the answer but most of us don't conjure up the courage to do what we know mm as my mother would say put that in your pipe and smoke it <laughs> so as you look at your life right now in this time where we are spending quiet time with ourselves and family members and friends and listening to the still small voice within what tough decisions do you need to make right now so that when you emerge from where we are that it will take your life in a totally different direction what tough decision have you been sitting on that you've been afraid to make and i i can just share with you that having the courage to do what you know it, it's not the absence of fear is the willingness to act in spite of the fear having the courage to make the tough decision i had a friend who she just did not like to go to doctors and she felt oh what you don't know can hurt you well she was wrong she waited too long and she did not go until it was too late and it took her out of here and didn't have to I believe that life is full of tough decisions. And if we want to live a life of happiness, of joy, of peace, of excitement, of adventure. Helen Keller said life is either a daring adventure or it's boring. If you want to live a life that's worthwhile, living your life on purpose. If you want to as Miles Monroe would say rob the cemetery of your gifts of your talents of your dreams of your abilities and make a major contribution to life the book of life asks the question Adam where are you Adam where are you and i think we're always being asked the question where are you in terms of your talents abilities and skills where are you when you look in the mirror do you see the person that you thought you would see i know i'm shocked what i got on the scales at cancer centers of america and it said 297 pounds i said are you sure this scale working right <laughs> i never expected to be this big and and so I said I'm out of alignment. This is not me. My daughter Dr. Ona Brown, she said, "Daddy, your stomach is so big. We could give it a microphone." 
I said, oh, come on, that is cruel. And so now it's not about just complaining about my size, digging a grave with my teeth. It's about being actively engaged in doing something about it, making a change, going for walks, exercising, using everything that I possibly can to reverse the unhealthy choices that I've made that brought me here. I love the quote that says, wherever you find yourself at some point in time, you made an appointment to be there. So I have no one to blame but me. I could say, oh, the doctors gave me this steroid to stop cancer. It put 80 pounds on me. Well, you can't get 80 pounds on you without it coming through your mouth. <laughs> Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Carlisle said, truth crushed the earth shall rise again. Winston Churchill said, the truth is incontrovertible. Malice may attack it, ignorance may deride it, but at the end, there it is. And at the end, I wasn't moving my body. At the end, I was eating all the time. I have a sweet tooth, and I had to become disciplined to do what I know and not what I feel. You have something special. Decide to live a life of non-negotiables. Have certain things in your life that you say that you value. Your peace of mind, your health, your health is your wealth. Relationships that are meaningful, that can help you grow mentally and emotionally and spiritually. But most of all, making it a priority to have peace. Yes, to enjoy, to laugh at this thing called life, to create experiences that you will enjoy in special moments that you can look toward. A friend of mine, she, she was, rightly so, was depressed because her father died. And I said, don't focus on the fact that he's gone. No. Focus on the fact that you had him for 51 years, over a half a century, a gift from God, and the special moments that you spent together. Oh, yes, you will miss his physical presence, but even the casket and the grave can never rob you of the memories that you share together, his laughter, his smile, the playfulness and the man that he was, your hero. Oh yes, his spirit is in you. And now he will be able to build a legacy through you, through your presence and how you show up in life because you are his baby girl. <laughs> you have something special.